This is Darren with Meyer v. Works, and today we are in Squim, Washington. It's funny, they say Squim is a blue hole because it doesn't get that much rain, and there's rain forecasts all around us, but uh, we get the rain shadow of the Olympic Mountains, and I look around, and it's a clear blue sky, but I look over in the, <laughs> over on the distance there, and it's rain clouds. So we might get a little bit of rain here today, but anyway, you're not here to learn about the weather. Uh, today we're working on an aqua hot. Now, what's happening with this thing is it just won't ignite. A uh, customer says it was working fine a couple weeks ago, and uh, now he tries to turn it on, and uh, the motor will start up, and I'm gonna let you hear that. Motor's gonna spin up, but it's just not gonna have that ignition. Uh, we do hear the gas solenoid opening. One of the things I like to do is, um, I'll have the customer demonstrate what it's doing, and um, I'm listening for some things as it's operating itself. So the Webasto burner, well, the burner's not burning, but the motor makes that high-pitched whining sound. We can hear that, and I'll demonstrate that for you here. So what I wanna do is, um, we're going to troubleshoot that and uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a good annual service. Uh, customer states this hasn't been cleaned maybe two to three years. A lot of times with these systems the whole problem could be um, the uh, it just needs a good cleaning. You've got a fuel filter which you might see back right there and then there's a little nozzle, one of these small little little nozzle things. We're going to get into that in a second. And um, sometimes they get clogged. And uh, so I've done enough of these um, uh, troubleshooting type things. And and uh, I like to start with a good annual service, a good clean bill of health. And maybe that might fix the whole thing. If it does, great. If not, then we'll go next into the uh, diagnosis. And I'll show you my procedure that I go through to diagnose that. If it doesn't turn out to be that, I might mention my procedure and then give you links in my um, um, on my resources tab uh, to where to go, and you just follow along with my procedure and uh, you know step one, step two, step three, do it in order, and um, uh, you'll pretty much nail the problem every time. So. Um, Lots to look forward to. So let me show you some of the tools I've got gathered around here. I might need a few more, but it's a good place to start. So if you're gonna be doing this uh, for an annual service, this is what we're gonna focus on first. Um, I'll show you some of the tools that we're gonna be um, using to make that happen, okay? So here, let's get busy. So these are tools that I would be using if, if um, when I do my annual service, everything's metric on these things. So you'll need a, a 10 and 11 socket. You'll need an extension. I like these hemostats to squeeze off the gas line. I uh, got this little guy from Harbor Freight. He's gonna help squeeze that little door plunger. Uh, old toothbrushes, cleaning, clean, a clean toothbrush and a um, oily one. Some brake cleaner, new filter, Ziploc bag. You'll put the Ziploc bag around the filter when you take it off so you don't spill fuel. Um, purple gloves, and uh, this is something I made. You can make it yourself. I can make it for you, whatever, but you get a little connector socket. And then what I've done here is I've got burner element and engine. So I'm able to control the aqua hot myself with my little radio shack box. And you just recreate the switch. You could even probably buy an aqua hot switch and, and make this connector here. And uh, so that, what that does is it allows me to, to, to control it from out here and not have to run in and out of the coach constantly. And then and another assortment of my hand tools there. So with that, let's, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is install this because I want you to, I'm gonna put it on burner. I want you to actually hear what this thing sounds like, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this panel and um, you know, Phillips screws. And because my connector that I made is gonna connect right here and you'll see that in just a second. Okay, this is the connector right here we're after. Um, a lot of times it'll be screwed in, in with these little small three millimeter screws and uh, that's what they've done. So right back up in here, it's right there. So again, what this is gonna allow me to do is um, start and stop the aqua hot without having to walk in and out of the coach all the time. And uh, there they are, okay. I know they're there, I just gotta, there it is, okay. Okay. So that harness is the one that basically goes up to the switch. So I'm just gonna make sure my switches are off, which they are, and I'm gonna plug this harness into that same spot. 
and you can make these. I made mine, so it's not a big deal. If I can get this wire to get out of my way. There we go, okay. So now what that just did, well, that, that allows me to control the whole thing from here. So let's listen to the burner, here we go. So I got my light. Now if I'm quiet, so it's doing its pre-purge. If I'm quiet, you'll hear the gas solenoid click. We've got some lights here. <coughs> okay, and they're telling me that my diesel burner status is on. And um, what's that? Pump three is on. So pump three is our stir pump. You want pump three to be on whenever um, the zone pumps are not on. So you're either going to have pump three or you're going to have the zone pumps. Okay, what do we got going on up there? We got a light up there. Who's my heating status? So now he wants to heat, but I'm not hearing the that deep roar, if you will. Okay, so he's wanting to heat. Pump three is on, and my burner is on. But like the customer states, it's not igniting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I just wanted you to hear it. That that's what we're fighting. It's not. It the, the aqua's not igniting. So after a few. After a few minutes, this light's gonna come on right here, which is the same light inside your coach. It's basically gonna say, hey, I tried, I couldn't light. Um, don't know what to tell you. Now, let me see something here. Yeah, I've got my hand on the exhaust right here and it's just, it's warm. It's, it's certainly not hot. These things, their target is 180 degrees. It's certainly not 180 degrees. And we don't have that ex ignition, we don't have, um, Sometimes you get a little bit of smoke out of these things when they first fire off and I know it's going to happen when this thing fires off because if the gas valve is engaging and it's putting that spray inside and it's not igniting then we're going to have a lot of fuel inside of here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the switch off. Okay, now he's going to post purge and I'm going to kind of get this guy up here because we're not going to use him for this next part. <clears throat> there we go. And uh, so the next thing, <clears throat> we'll take this cover off and um, we'll take a peek inside. But I wanted to show you that that's what's going on with this thing. Okie dokie. Okay, folks, I'm moving the camera around, so I want you to get some good angles. Uh, so we'll take this cover off. This is interesting that it's a screw here. A lot of times this is an 11 millimeter. Um, so it's interesting that these are just Phillips screws. All right, here we go. Okay, this one does normal. Some of some of you guys are going to have a switch right here, like a plunger switch for the door switch. Now on the back, yep, here we go. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, on the back, take a moment and familiarize yourself. I don't know if I'm in the shot. I'm not even looking, but take a moment and familiarize yourself with all of this. See, this is the connector that I made myself. And all you have to do, let me make sure you're in the shot. Let me do this for you guys. Uh, hold on, let me move that right there okay so look here this is the connector that i did okay and it tells you on the motherboard diesel and electric and preheat and here's how you wire your switches and just go get a radio shack box and some parts and some switches and you can make your own little remote switch remote switch panel so i made my own and plugged it in here but the other thing is all the rest of this they tell you where all your controls are where your pumps go all your switches so everything is, is right here so really if you're if you're patient and you study these schematics, you can understand a lot of this and you can take your meter and ring out some of this stuff. Um, so that's helped me sometimes. But another thing I have is if once we do the annual service, if this thing is still misbehaving, we'll go through a whole procedure that I've kind of created a little bit. And basically by creating it, what I mean is um, I've gone through several other different catalogs or manuals or whatever. And let me move you back over here and kind of distilled out the marrow of how to troubleshoot these things. Okay, so I hope you're going to be in, in the shot. Now at this point, oh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change a fuel filter. Okay, well, Darren, why are you going to change your fuel filter? Well, because I don't know if this thing had bad gas in it and we're going to be changing out the nozzle in there. So let's start with a fuel filter way upstream first. And then, um, then every time we try to start this thing, 
we're going to run clean fuel into it. Okay. Um, so what I have seen and actually troubleshot in the past is folks will replace their fuel filter and their nozzle all in one step. And I would say that that is incorrect. You do not want to do that. You want to change your fuel filter. Now that your fuel filter is changed, run your aqua hot a little bit, let the new fuel work through the filter and then through the old nozzle. Okay. Then once it's done that, you can assume that you've got clean fuel coming through your fuel filter, going through your burner, through your nozzle. Um, because between the fuel filter and here, it could be bad fuel. Well, we got lucky on this one. The fuel filter is right here. Some of you, I know on the Winnebago tours, your fuel filter is going to be mid coach and underneath. Uh, I usually crawl underneath and get to the fuel filter that way. But uh, there's also a trap door. You can slide your slide rooms out. Um, I, I don't know all the different manufacturers. I just know the systems. But some of the fuel filters are going to be in the gas bay. Some of your fuel filters are going to be all the way in the front where the generator is. And some of your fuel filters are going to be all the way in the back where the engine is. So the fuel filter could be anywhere. There's two types of fuel filters. There's this kind here. I don't know if you can see it. You'll see it here in a second. And they have the other kind that's got the glass bowl in the bottom. So figure out which kind you have. And then you can get those correct parts ordered okay so enough on the fuel filter but it needs to be changed if you're not going to change your fuel filter then that could be the whole problem is that the fuel filter is clogged uh, because it got algae or something or, or bacteria or something in the fuel and it's just it's just choking it's a 10 micron filter it's pretty small and we do need to make sure that gas i see i keep saying gas but every time i say gas i'm meaning diesel okay let's make sure um, sometimes my brain does not work with the words so what we're going to do take two hemostats and i'm going to pinch off or pinch pinch if you're in texas watching this pinch right no i, I got to beg for that we're going to pinch the uh the fuel lines and uh okay because we don't want fuel to kind of leak we want to kind of isolate this thing so i'm going to take my hat off and you're going to see the back of my head and i'm going to grab a headlight it's dark and scary up in there. Okay, here we go. Another fuel line. There it is right there. Okay, so my fuel lines are pinched. A Ziploc bag. We're going to wrap around the fuel filter, grab it, unscrew it, and then any fuel that leaks is going to leak in the bag. We'll zip it closed. Got it? So, pardon my back and all this, but I'm going to be crawling up in here. Okay, if it's really tight, you'll need to get a little bit of a strap wrench. So let me go get one of those. Okay, so I went and got a strap wrench and I also moved you. So I don't know if you could watch. So, so I got a strap wrench and all I'm gonna do is just kind of motivate this thing to get started here a little bit. Oh, wait a minute, that's tight. My bad. All right, let's go this way then. There we go. Okay, so we got them started. And here you see my, my um, strap wrenches, or not strap wrenches, relax. Hemostats or hose clamps or whatever. So we're going to put the Ziploc bag around and we're going to unscrew this. See, it's also a good idea, there we go, to put um, the, the hours and the date that this was done. So it's dripping a little bit. I want to make sure it's done dripping. There's a little bit of an O-ring right here. We're going to come and get that O-ring out. Okay. And uh, so here's our, our old fuel filter. We're going to pull this out. Okay, where are you guys? Okay, the new fuel filter in the box is gonna come with a new O-ring and the new canister, okay? So we're gonna take the old O-ring out. And if you, this is one of my favorite tools, this little right angle pick, I love this thing. For such a time as this, it's great for getting electrical tunnels. Ah, come on, 
electrical terminal was propped off of refrigerator control boards. And I'd like to demonstrate how easy it is to take this O-ring off too, if it would cooperate with me. There we go. There we go. So we take the old O-ring off. And we put the new one on. Thusly. Okay. Now I'm going to take some old diesel and just kind of wet this uh, rubber right here. Okay, there we go. All right, the new one. So I've, I've kind of wetted my gasket here. If you've watched a lot of my videos, I call things different things. I don't know, call it dyslexia, call it the brain's not thinking about what I'm doing. Well, that didn't sound quite right. I am thinking about what I'm doing. I'm just not thinking and talking and all this. So, so we're nice and snug, okay? You don't want to go too tight. Uh, at a millwright I work with, he's like, everything's millwright tight. Uh, you want this snug. You want it to be just a little bit past snug. So we take our hemostats off and let's pull everybody out of here. So now I've got my new fuel filter on. So what are we gonna do next? Let's go ahead and fire off the burner because I wanna get the fuel to here. I got a new sound. Okay, I did not get ignition. So that's okay, that's okay. We're following the trail, right? So I'm gonna turn this back off. Okay, he, he's, he's done, he turned himself off. So we're going to uh, stick this back up here, but you see, I didn't have to go back inside and turn that on and off, that was kind of cool. Okay, so now at this point, we're gonna actually take the burner head off and um, I'm gonna cut this bundle. I've got a new tie wrap. I'm gonna let the uh, burner turn itself off. Okay. And because this unit has flexible fuel lines, we'll be able to leave everything intact. Um, some of you are gonna have like gas line, which were, were like stainless steel or whatever they make them out of. They're gonna, they're gonna come down here and be bent with 90 degrees. Uh, if you have those, what I like to do is take two different colored tie wraps, little small ones. Um, I've used them in some of my other videos, but uh, I will say, for example, let's make this one red. I'll use a small little tie wrap. I'll put a tie wrap around this one to be red, and I'll put a tie wrap around this one to be red, and this will be blue and blue. And uh, that way, when you reassemble, just match the colors, unless you're red, blue, colorblind. And then I guess you'd have to use green and yellow or something. So we're just letting this turn himself off. And as soon as we do, we'll unplug his control. Meanwhile, we can take this off. Now, I'll mention this since we have a moment here. When we are, if we do need to do some troubleshooting, we're gonna be doing a lot of our troubleshooting right here, okay? We're gonna leave everything plugged in and we're gonna test our B plug and our C plug and we're gonna, in a relationship. Um, this one is a lot of our inputs, this one's a lot of our outputs, but we'll, we'll get into that at, towards the end, okay? Um, is my switch off? All my switches are off. So I was expecting this thing to turn itself off by now. He just made a different sound to us. There we go. Okay. So now that he's off, we're going to unplug that one. Okay. Now they're going to be individual. Sometimes they're bust. So remember orange and white is going to go to orange and white. That one's going to go to the center. And then this one is our clock. And, uh, you might want to paint dot some of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and no, let me do it the way I'm going to teach you. I'm going to pause. I'm going to get some paint dots. We're going to paint dot these because that's what I would expect you to do because what will happen is if you don't get these quite right, it ain't going to work right. So let's do a full stop. Let me go get some paint pens and let's paint dot these because that's what I would want you guys to do as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, not only did I get paint dots, but remember I talked about my tie wraps. Well, here I grabbed, I grabbed some tie wraps. So I'm just going to randomly pick this guy back here and I'm going to do this because uh, maybe in the future somebody needs to take this apart and 
if you get your fuel lines backwards, it's not going to work either. So these are just some best practices that I've developed over the years that I'm sharing with you guys. So that one's going to be red. And this one down here is going to be red. Let's move them up there a little bit. Yeah, I don't plan on taking these off, but when I got my paint pens, I figured, well, I just mentioned it, so let's go ahead and do this step here. I've even got this fancy tape that has arrows on it, but uh, I stopped using that because uh, if you get fuel on it, it doesn't stick anymore, so the tie wraps will stay. Okay, so that's just a little bit of housekeeping I'd recommend you do. And then let's just, I grabbed a red. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little red dot right there and a red dot right there. Okay, and who's next? Let's go with, uh, I don't know, here's a purple. The color doesn't really matter. All you gotta do is, again, just be dumb enough to match up the colors, right? Because, like I said, I've worked on enough of these where other technicians have actually wired them wrong and put the gas lines backwards. So, and then I'll grab blue. So these are little things. Let's just kind of keep it simple and make it dumb so that anybody that comes after me can... Uh, we know that the unit works. That's the thing. Because the unit has worked within the last couple of weeks. So we're not troubleshooting a unit that's not working. We're troubleshooting a unit that's not igniting. Okay, so now that we've paint, paint, paint pinned everything, and we've also indexed our fuel lines, um, we can safely unplug all that. Okay, no problem there. I believe those are 10 millimeter. Let's see, where's 10? There's a 10. Uh, maybe a deep socket would have been better. I didn't grab that, I grabbed my shallows. Okay, it'll reach. Okay, with an extension. Okay, now on this ear, I'll mention this in case I forget. When you go to tighten, I'm on the ear. Okay, so here, let me, okay, so here, here's, we're gonna take the burner off. Burner's attached with two bolts. One at the, uh, what is it, about um, uh, one o'clock position, and then one opposite down here at the seven o'clock position. Those are the only two bolts. They're 10 millimeter. And when you put this back on, you wanna be very careful. Um, I got a little overzealous one time and was cranking on this thing and I broke the ear off. If you break your ear off, you will have the opportunity to learn everything you ever wanted to know about how these burners get put together because the ear is the base that everything is built on. So I'm thinking of that movie um, Tomb Raider where, where Laura Croft found the clock and uh, the guy's taking, okay, screw 35, quadrant 3, and all this kind of stuff. So as I'm taking this thing apart, um, I'm very careful with all the screws. So those two bolts... Okay, there is our, that does not look bad. The nozzle might be bad. Let me, let me get you a close up on what I'm looking at here. Okay, so I'm gonna set him here and let me, I'm gonna grab the camera and show you what I'm looking at and maybe do some show and tell. So let me just grab this guy right here. Okay, so we've taken the burner off. This plate looks really, really clean. I'm very pleased with this. Um, now it looks like it was cleaned with something a little bit more abrasive. See the scratches? You, you really don't want the scratches. Remember I had my toothbrushes? Um, I will clean that with toothbrushes, okay? Because you want this to be a reflective plate. And if, if you scrape it too hard, and I'm okay with this, but I'm just telling you, if you scrape this too hard or you hit this with some pretty abrasive, aggressive chemicals, then you're going to scrub all this reflective material off. The other thing about this plate is we want that plate to be perfectly flat, okay, which this one is. I'm looking at this plate right here. We want that plate to be flat because inside of there, when this burner starts, he's going to make a seal with, with this mating part of it, okay? So we do want this plate to move a little bit, okay? You can see this dark edge right here where he has been making the seal, okay? Now, this is the nozzle we're going to be replacing. And if you look at that, that does look a little nasty. That might be our whole problem. The other thing is over here, we have a photo sensor and that's what's going to tell the brain, the controller, that there is a flame. Um, if you want to test that, it's just two wires, right? 
here, you can take that off, shine a flashlight on it and put it in the dark and you'll see the resistance value change on these two wires right here. These two electrodes, it's very important that they are positioned properly. And okay, right over here, we have, and we're gonna use this, um, right over here, we're gonna, um, is like a gauge, okay? You're gonna slide that over your nozzle, okay? And then these get positioned. If they're too far forward this way, they will drag in, let me back up a little bit, they'll drag in the, the, the this nozzle is going to shoot out a fine mist of, of diesel. And um, sometimes when you're troubleshooting it, you'll, you'll set it up exactly like this and have a flame shooting out of this thing. Very exciting. Um, be careful with that, but we've, that's kind of fun. But um, if these are too far inboard, then they will drag in the flame. If they're too far outboard, well, they're not going to ignite. And you could get some reflection off of the burner, which is in, that's the burner head, but that's, that's the burn chamber. And it'll start bouncing around on you. So that's why these probes are very important to be positioned. So use your index for that right there. Um, so we're going to be replacing this nozzle. Um, but I wanted to show you, here is the gas on. You'll hear this thing click. And that's what we can hear when he's starting. Um, he's going to click to allow the gas valve. See, I did it. It's a diesel. So every time I say gas, you think diesel. So this is the solenoid that's going to allow that fuel. I'll just use the word fuel um, to work its way through. Okay. And, um, but I am really pleased. This looks very clean. Uh, the only thing is that nozzle looks a little dirty. And then let me move this. Let me put you back so I can get my hands back. So bear with me. Stand by. So now what did we do to get to this point? Um, we took off these two bolts. Here's the two ears. This is what I want you to be careful of. They will break. And here's this. The very first piece is this piece is the first thing you put on your bench if you're going to build this. So, um, so there's that. Um, if you do a lot of these aquapots, uh, so what are, the, what are the parts at Darren Stocks, since we're looking at this? If you do a lot of these aqua repairs or services, I stock a new reflector. Um, they're, they're not a tremendous amount of money. Um, I'm thinking like less, less than $30. Um, but I do stock one of these new reflectors. If somebody has worked on it before and it's bent, that's not going to work. If they've if sometimes these things are so nasty, you just can't clean it and, and you might as well, you're going to waste an hour trying to clean the thing. So, um, but this one looks good. Um, so I, re I, re I stock reflectors, I stock nozzles. I even stock these little grommets down here. There's a left and a right, top and bottom. Uh, so those are some parts that I stock, certainly fuel filters. Um, those are some things that I stock in my trailer. If I'm going to do an aqua hot call, I want to make sure I have all this type of stuff. Okay. So now we're going to reach in here and pull this out. One more thing I'll mention, if I can get this thing turned around, this, this part in the back is what's allowing fuel in and there's a match mark. Now, honestly, this one looks like he's been moved. Um, do you know if this has been moved? Did you ever move that? Okay. Um, if you're going to adjust this, you do need to have a pretty fancy high-end tool to know that his fuel mix is right. Um, so normally we don't adjust this at all. Um, so again, since this has worked fine, I'm not going to mess with this. But if we were trying to troubleshoot this thing, it could be because his air fuel mix is not quite right. And this is where he gets his outside air from the bottom into here. And so they put match marks on it. Okay, index marks. And uh, this one does look like he's been moved. I see a little piece of white down here. It should have matched this. So we're going to leave it alone, but just be advised. Don't be like screwing around with this thing unless you really have this fancy tool. Okay, so let's move him out of the way. We're going to just let him, yeah, we're going to let him hang. He's not that heavy. And we're going to reach in here and we're going to pull that out. Okay, so we've got some buildup on that. Okay, let me bring him out in the yard. And then I'm going to take my flashlight and look in there. Now, let me show you what I'm looking at. Let me, let me bring you over here. Okay, so I just pulled out the, um, the burn chamber and I've got my flashlight stuck in there. That looks okay. I have done some of these jobs where that chamber there is just so filled with soot. It's insanely nasty. Um, but, but the flame shoots around all those things, heating that, that creates your heat exchanger, okay? Again, this one does not look terribly bad. I really believe that unless we have a bad component, which a bad component could be these sensors in here, high limits, um, 
there's a push button on that um, down down here. Um, so I'll show you the way you troubleshoot those is by following the B and C plugs on this guy right here, which is what I'll send you a link for if we don't need to get to that. Here's your number three stir pump. Okay, remember I mentioned earlier up here that you're only ever going to have a number three pump or you're going to have a zone pump, but you would never have a either you'd never have zone pumps and a stir pump at the same time. It's only one or the other. Uh, so this would be your stir pump. And if you look at the tubes, it's going to go from the lower to the upper part of the, the heat exchanger part inside and just kind of mix that that. Um, uh, what is it? Boiler antifreeze and, and, it, and it's not water. Water wraps itself around this thing with copper tubing. So there's no water floating around in here. The water stays inside of its tubing, but it does have boiler antifreeze in here. And so this stir pump is basically mixing, like stirring around like a Kool-Aid. Okay. So if you, I have another video where you need, I've had to drain these things and there's your, your petcock right there to drain, do the draining. And um, just, I'll make a link to this video, to my other YouTube video on draining an aqua hot. Okay. Uh, we did that because, there we go. We did that because these zone pumps failed. Okay. So with that, um, I wanted to show you that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to clean this. It, it's not going to take long. It, it's not terribly bad, but I'm going to clean this. We, we've come so far. Let's just kind of dust this off a little bit and put this back in. Okay. And, um, now, um, this area right here, let me make sure you're in the shot. There we go. Uh, a, lot of a, lot of, a lot of you might have a really shiny black buildup right there. And uh, again, this is another part that I, I stock, is a new one of these things. Because like I say, you will spend, oh my God, an hour or two just trying to get that clean. So just, if you're doing this professionally and you're doing a lot of them, just stock one, okay? And let the other one sit in parts cleaner overnight and it'll come up, come up a lot cleaner, but you don't need to be cleaning this out in the field. Um, but this, again, this looks totally acceptable. I am totally okay with that. And I'm also totally okay with my reflector. So there's no reason to clean that, but I just want to get some of this soot off. Okay. And that's what we're going to do next. And then we'll, um, I want to turn this thing on and let it run. I want to see fuel squirting out of the old nozzle. Okay. Before I put a new nozzle on, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. We're back. We've just kind of brushed that off a little bit. He goes in here. thusly. Now what I want to do is fire this thing up and I want the fuel to spray out. I want to see the fuel spray. And so I want to get these um, fuel lines cooperating with me. with me for our purposes that's going to be good enough he's sideways but it'll work okay so we've got our control board Let me make sure you're in the shot here okay so i've moved you over there this is the show right here we're going to reconnect um we're going to reconnect we're going to all this basically put it all back together i want to verify fuel is coming out of this nozzle i need to know that before i put all this back in there um, it is wet okay this is wet so I'm assuming that fuel's coming out, but I need to see a nice spray pattern. And if the nozzle is clogged, maybe because there was some crap inside my fuel filter, uh, or maybe it was being starved because the fuel filter was clogged. Uh, so we're gonna reconnect all this. Let's see, let's see here. Blue goes to blue, which is our clock. Purple to purple, and red to red. All right. Okay, so there we go. We're happy. And let's take this control board. This is another reason I like to have this thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this towel right here. Okay. And I want to see that spray pattern. Uh, a lot of times what you can do is what I'll do right now is I'm going to use this box instead. I want to see the pattern on my box. Where's a seam? Where's a seam? Here's a seam. Okay. Okay. So I want to see that spray pattern on my box here. Okay. So here we go. Uh huh. I see the problem. Yeah. See my spray pattern? It's kind of, it's not a fine mist. 
let's do that again. I'm gonna go to a clean thing. Let me, I'm gonna bring you closer. I want you to see what I'm seeing here. So hang on. This is worth, this is the money shot. This is worth the cost of admission. Okay, so folks, I've moved you closer. I want you to watch a spray pattern as it comes out of here with respect to my, my uh, board here, okay? Hopefully you can get a good enough shot at what it's doing. I've just turned the burner on, okay? You're gonna hear it click. Keep an eye on that nozzle and how the, how the fuel is coming out of it. You'll also see the spark. It's gonna try to ignite, but I've got my thumb on the off switch. Okay, see that spray pattern? It's coming out terrible. That's supposed to be a fine mist, but instead it's, it's kind of like a, a stream, okay? So I am convinced at this point that the problem is a fuel nozzle. I'm also happy that I put my new fuel filter on because now I know I have good fuel flowing to this location right here, okay? So let me boom you out a little bit. It's hard to touch the, the thing with gloves on. So I believe at the end of the day, if now what I wanna do, I'm gonna leave you right where you are, okay? I'm gonna replace this fuel nozzle right here with a new one. We're gonna repeat this exact same test and, and at that point you should see a fine mist. That's what we want. And uh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Also, <laughs> when you're gonna do this, unplug your, uh, these electrodes so that you don't have ignition, okay? And there is a shortcut. What is that shortcut? It's one of these wires. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. So I'm going to basically unplug the, uh, I'll figure, I'll, I'm going to go look and figure out, but there's a wire you unplug and it disables a coil so you don't have ignition right here. That was a safety violation that I just did. Sorry. So uh, let me get set up for replacing the nozzle. We, we, we will repeat this step and we will see the new fuel spray. Okay. Okay, folks. So what I should have done originally and what I'm going to ask you to do when you're going to do the spray pattern test is everybody in the shot? Okay. Is to take the four screws off this coil. Let me, let me move you out a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Bear with me for a little ride. Okay. There's four screws that hold the coil on the back of the motor. Take those four screws off and disconnect the, these two wires. Okay. What that's going to do is deny this thing from, from creating a spark here on the, on the electrodes. Okay. You don't want to create a big fire. So that would be the trick there. Now this yellow wire that comes out, Let's follow that yellow wire. That yellow wire is gonna be coming up to this yellow wire right here. Now, how do you know that, Darren? How do you know that? Well, let me show you something. Right there is the ignition coil that I wanna disable, okay? Because this is the diesel burner. It's the yellow wire I need to disable. The yellow wire comes out of my, uh, I think that's a C plug, okay? So yellow wire comes out of the C plug, and that's the yellow wire we see over in the connector. So by disabling this ignition wire, we're still allowing all these other things to work, right? Okay, so again, we followed the schematic. All right, let me set you back up again. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the fuel nozzle. That's a 5 8 socket here. And I don't know, it's like metric and standard or whatever, but 5 8 fits perfectly on the nozzle. Make sure, make sure, make sure you use a backup wrench. The reason why is this brass piece that sticks out is about that long and if you're putting a lot of tension here on the end without a backup wrench you could torque and bend this this tower if you will okay so always always use a backup wrench i'm just using an a, adjustable okay and i've got that loosened okay so we're going to take this nozzle off yeah you can see how dirty that is um where am I at here? Okay, so that was dirty. So that would be fuel filter allowed some stuff to get through to degrade our fuel nozzle. Okay, so we're going to put him there. And uh, so now I'm convinced that I've got a new fuel filter. Now let me show you. See the difference between the two? Where are you at? See the difference between the two? This is a new one, obviously. So that was our problem. So we're gonna put this back in. We've, we've already replaced our filter. We've let it run. We've flushed out as best as we can. So we're gonna put this back in. Now when you tighten these new nozzles, you're gonna tighten it, loosen it, tighten it, okay? And that's gonna help seat it. So I got my backup wrench. We're going to, okay, I got my 5 eighths on there nice and snug. I'm gonna tighten it, okay? Loosen it, okay? 
and then tighten it again. Okay, so that's gonna make sure it's nice and snug. Now we have our new filter on there. Our coil has been unplugged. So are we ready for this next fun, exciting test? Here we go. My finger's on the off switch. Look at that fine mist. Did you see that? Okay, so we've cleaned our burner. We've replaced our nozzle, tight, loose, tight. Um, let's adjust our electrodes. They look fine, but if we're coming this far, let's do one more test to make sure that the electrodes are fine. Let's show you how that's done. So I'm gonna take this, snap it on to, open that just a little bit. I want it to go around the, the, um, the nut there. There we go. So in other words, I want it to sit right on top of that thing, okay? And, um, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's off by like a millimeter, but in other words, you don't want it off by a lot. It's off by just a little bit. If you need to adjust it, there's a screw in the back. You can figure that out. Loosen that and tweak, tweak. I didn't bump them at all when I replaced the nozzle and it worked fine before. So I'm not gonna fix something that's not broken. So great, now I don't have to holler. So I am okay with, with the setting on that, but that's how this thing's gonna work, okay? Did you see how that worked? And we're gonna put him back over here where he was, there was a thing that fell. Here it is right here. Okay. And where's the screws right here? That goes there, that goes there. And fun with gloves and gravel. Go to reach for the screw, it just buries itself in the gravel. I'm about to lose these gloves, but I don't want to smell like diesel for the rest of the day. I've got more customers. Where'd that go? All right, that piece is lost. All that was was like a little washer thing. That's pretty cool. So that's good. Now we're gonna reconnect this. So now if we were to do our test, so I've put my coil back together. Now if we were to do our test, we would get uh, ignition. And everybody would be very excited because Darren would be on fire. Darren would not be excited. No, not even a little bit. There we go. Okay. Anybody got any good jokes? I do know that you cannot run in a campground. You can only ran because it's past tense. And I got a moment to tell this one. So you got Einstein, Newton, and Pascal all sitting in a bar. And they decide to play hide and seek. So I, it turns out that Einstein's it. So he says, okay, I count. Eins, why, drei, vier. And um, so he counts to 10 or whatever. And well, while he's counting, Newton grabs a piece of chalk and uh, stay with me, folks. This is, this is kind of funny. Because <clears throat> all you're seeing me do is put this back together. So Newton grabs a piece of chalk and drives a, drives a, a meter box on the, on, the, on the ground there. And... Uh, 
grabs a chair and sits in it. So, so when Einstein finishes counting and uh, he's like, ready or not, here I come, he turns around and he sees Newton sitting on the floor on a chair. Right away, he doesn't notice the little square box that he drew on the floor. So he's like, Newton, I got you. You're right there. You're standing in front of me. We're supposed to hide. He's like, nah, uh, uh. You found one Newton per square meter. You found Pascal. <laughs> okay, but I'm bump there. One of my favorite nerdy physics jokes. That's kind of what I went to school for was physics, believe it or not. That's when they were building the super colliding superconductor down in Moxahatchee, Texas, and uh, that's what I went to school for. And then when that project got scratched. I went into automation instead. So, okay, so enough on that. Uh, here is where you want to be careful. You don't want to tighten down too hard on these ears. You don't need this thing to be like Millwright tight. I love you, Bill, but that's the guy who told me that. But you don't need these things to be tight. You want them snug. Okay, so we got our, our nozzle in there. We've cleaned our chamber. Okay, here we have our paint dots. And we're going to go blue to blue. I don't even have to think about it. Here's purple. My wife's favorite color, and there's a red one around here somewhere. Right here, okay. And there he goes right there, red being my paint dot color, not the wire color. Okay, so there's that. <clears throat> All right, who wants to anticipate good results? I do. All right, here we go. Uh, let's move all this because if it fires off, we're gonna have a thing right there. So here we go. Let's see if, uh, now, if not, we're gonna go into some troubleshooting, okay? But as promised, if not, I will walk you through what I would do in case this doesn't work. Okay, there we go. We have ignition. That was a problem. So our aquad is now working. And now we've got some smoke coming out because that's all the fuel that's coming out of this thing. And uh, so there you go. Now, um, I'm going to let this run for a few minutes. I got all this. Let me show you what it's doing to my tools. So we've got that exhaust coming out and it's all this, 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 this stuff that we brushed off is coming all over my, my tools. We've got some smoke. I accept that. I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run for some time. And while it's running, I'm going to go um, show you what, would, what I would do next in case this didn't fix it. Okay. So hang with me a little bit longer and hopefully this added value to you. Uh, so again, the whole problem was um, Aquat's not igniting and at the end of the day I just needed an annual service um, and uh, that's all it needed because we had a dirty nozzle we had a dirty nozzle because the fuel filter was bad now we are going to add some let's let's pan you up here where are you there you go we're going to add some um, boiler antifreeze to that okay uh, I do have this little uh, loop thing you look through but um, here let me just show you it's it's this product right there, boiler antifreeze. So it's made for these systems. Um, I'm drawing a blank. There's that grass, that uh, glycol something or other. I, I can't remember what all that is, but I know that that's the right stuff to put in here. So we're going to be adding some of that. Um, so let me stop for a second. Let me go get my cheat sheet that I've created and I'm going to show you where on my website or what I'll do. It'll be easier on the description below. I'll put a link to my cheat sheet on what I would do at this point if it turns out that this did not fix the problem. Okay, so I'll be right back. Well, hey folks, there you are. Okay, so here's the trick. We have to get that in this jug that's in the spice and they only give me like this much room up to the roof. So I'd like to see you try to figure out how to do that. So I'm out of, okay, I gotta be careful. How do I say this? I don't want you to think I go to Harbor Freight for all my tools. I love Harbor Freight because they have things like this, but, um, my tools are not Harbor Freight tools. So <laughs> I just mentioned Harbor Freight several times in my videos <laughs> and uh, I get my uh, drill bits. They last all of one time. So love you, Harbor Freight, but you know, hey. Um, anyway, so you get these little things right here. Okay. They're little like $4 little squeeze tubes and I buy a bunch of them. They are, they, they last uh, all of maybe five jobs and I throw them away. And uh, so this one I've labeled, I don't know if you can see that, there's a glare, but it's labeled boiler antifreeze on there. So I have one for boiler antifreeze. I've got one for hydraulic uh, or ATF for the hydraulic systems. I've got one for battery, distilled water. And um, so great little little tools for there. And you just follow the arrow. So I'm gonna stick this in because of the arrow 
in the jug and this in the tank behind me and pump, 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 pump. And that is how I am going to get that into that. And we got uh, a couple of 18s flying overhead. That's kind of exciting. A little bit of an air show. Woodby Island is just across the way. So I'm wondering if they're coming in or going out or doing what? I don't know. So they don't consult with me when they fly around like this, but I love seeing them up there. Hoorah. Okay, let's get busy. Oh, now, without also, I do have my uh, cheat sheets that I'm going to go over with you. Okay, so let's get the boiler antifreeze in there, and then I'll wrap up everything showing you my cheat sheet. If you follow this procedure, you're going to nail it. I've never, I don't want to say never, but nine times out of ten, when I get caught on these aqua hots, honestly, it's because other people have worked on them, and, and it just, they don't, they didn't follow my procedure. And so now, let's get you... Let me be your guide and let me share with you how to fix your own stuff. So, but let me get the jug on there and I'm gonna wrap the whole thing up going over this. So stay with me a little bit and we'll get that done. Okay, it's kind of tight, bleh, tight quarters in there, but I got you perched. So um, let's see, let me look at my arrow here. So this is gonna go into that. And my jug here is gonna come around here and we're gonna put this in there and then we're just gonna pump. See, I love Harbor Freight stuff is just, do I have my arrow going the right way? I do. See, somehow these things suck in air. Uh, one of these days I want to get a more fancier one of these things. See, it's just not priming itself. It's actually going the wrong way. <laughs> I'm going the opposite way of the arrow. Okay, so what was that comment I made about Harbor Freight and their stuff? Oh, well. Oh, this is maddening. It's it's not priming. I have the arrow going the right way. I'm squeezing the thing. Oh, this sucks. Okay. I'm going to break up that brand new box. And uh, see if I can get this thing to work. Because obviously it's not priming itself. Um, oh, wait. There we go. Okay. So all I did was I pulled the the out feed out of the bottom of the reservoir there and it started to work. So I take back all the stuff I just said. So the aqua hot is cold, so I'm gonna fill up the cold line. Now they have a orange, a green, and a pink. It's all chemically the same. No, this is not what you would put. Okay, so right there, I'm just above the cold line. So we're going to stop right there and we're going to run this because as it gets warm, it's going to go up to the hot line. So we don't want it to overflow. If it does overflow, it'll come out this hose and go on the ground. So that didn't take too much. Okay, so we got our antifreeze filled and I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn this on. So it might get kind of noisy, but what I'm going to do now is go over some of the troubleshooting. But I want this to get warmed up. Um, and run for a little bit, and I want to watch that uh, antifreeze. So there we go, we got ignition, yay. Now this, what I'm about to cover, will work on any of the aquats that have the Wobasto burner with this little control box, which is your 100s, your um, 450s, your 650s. So it, it's basically, the burner is pretty much the same on all these things, okay? Um, and it's control box. Now your control box might be black. This one is the, the older, I'm gonna call this the older style. Um, Okay, and we have the B plug and the C plug. Okay, so basically this is the brain. So when I'm gonna troubleshoot this, I'm gonna troubleshoot it from the brain. So what I have here, again, I'm gonna put links down below. I'm gonna make sure that you're in the shot here. So this is a page that I've got, and basically it's an exploded view of where all the pins are and what they do. Okay, so you'll notice that, um, let's see. B4 on the on the B plug, this pin on the bottom left is my battery plus, and then minus is opposite, okay, is B6. So B4 and B6, power's coming in, plus and minus right there on the bottom. Along the top, I've got some switches and indicator lights, okay? This C plug is where all the action's at. I've got my thermostat, my main board, high limit thermostat, I'm up here now, okay? and my, my ignition coil. And, and aren't all these things on this side the things that you would be troubleshooting why you would not have ignition, okay? Now, if we were to have started our troubleshooting at this point, 
we would have never revealed the problem because the control board was doing everything right. The, what we didn't have is we didn't have ignition and we know that because of the nozzle being clogged. Okay, so start with this and I have this laminated and I put it off on the side because I'm going to be referencing, you know, it's going to say B4 to C1 and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to stick him off on the side. Okay, then I've got, now this is out of the shop manual. Okay, I found this, okay, it's down here. It's the Hydro Hot Hydronic Heating System Shop Manual from 7 of 03. Oh, this is exciting. He just turned himself off. So I wonder if he's at temperature. He might be at temperature because there's no demand on the system. He may have gotten, okay, okay. So um, I'm assuming he got to 180 degrees and we can stick probes up in there and detect, but he just turned his burner off and that's about how long it takes to get to 180. Back where I was here. So this is the, the Hydro Hot Hydronic Heating System Manual. Okay, um, and this is page 65. So when I came across this little jewel, uh, now notice this is not the Aqua Hot, but Hydro Hot, Aqua Hot, they're, they're, they're the same, okay? So I found this in the Hydro Hot. I have not found this document in the Aqua Hot manuals, okay? But check this out. Um, we're gonna basically follow this procedure, condition one, condition two. Let's see, that would be, you're gonna check your voltage. You're gonna turn your switch on and off, okay? Do these in this order, okay? Then you're gonna go over here. You're gonna check for ground. You're gonna check for your thermostat test, um, your high limit thermostat test, your motor circuit test, your ignition coil test, okay? Every time I've ever followed this procedure in the order they tell me to do it, I've pretty much nailed the problem. Maybe not every single time, but more times than not. It's worth following this. And here's where they say, I'm just, I just saw this number, so I'm gonna grab it. They're gonna say, locate the control B plug and C plug. Okay, we just saw reference figure eight, which was that picture I just showed you. Insert probes of a DC multimeter into the C4 plus pin and the B2 minus pin locations and turn the diesel switch to on. Um, reference figure four and eight. If a voltage reading does not register on the voltmeter, the control unit needs to be replaced. If voltage is present, continue to the next test. So you see, it's just like these steps. So I'm gonna make links to this. If your aqua hot's not working, you will need a meter. One of these things does require you to have a jumper over here. So what I did was I just took a piece of 12 gauge Romex, snipped it off and made me a jumper. Um, and that worked. So I wanted to share this with you. Hopefully we'll get an opportunity to demonstrate this on another upcoming video. Okay, folks. Well, I'm going to wrap up the video now. I'm going to be putting the cover on and buttoning up some things, putting some tie wraps on some things. But um, if this added value to give us a thumb up, that's how you can thank us. Uh, if you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel. You'll find us at My RV Works um, on the YouTube. Um, we have a more fancier website or a, a title, but that'll get you there. And um, our goal is to make happy campers and happy campers say my RV works. So this is Darren from Squim, Washington, where it is not raining, <laughs> uh, signing off until the next video. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Bye.